It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We just finished our 12th economic phase sequence, and it tells a story of Betty Crocker being the clear leader in terms of money-making potential. Not so much that he just he makes the most money. Uh, he's maybe tied with Junior on that score right now. Uh, but he his insect powers make it so that he doesn't have to spend as much on maintenance. Now the, the problem he has is he, unless he, uh, unless they don't have the proper counter technology to him, he's fairly ineffective in combat. Um, a lot of these different technologies have a counter technology, so like the fighters that are here in Logos that Junior has, uh, they're countered by scouts of all things that have a point defense ability uh, that they can they can research. Um, so once you've researched that, you can kind of counteract uh, the effectiveness of fighters. Mines have minesweepers. Our raiders here, they have uh, uh, destroyers with scanners so that they have to research. But all the counter technologies you have to research. So there's also boarding ships where you can take over people's ships, but then you can counter that by getting security. So everything has kind of a counter. And uh, Betty Crocker is, is reliant heavily on a, a lot of those tricks. Um, Junior and Sonny have really been taking a hit through maintenance, but uh, another part of the story that's being told through these economic phase sequence charts is that Sonny's starting to kind of come back. He's making more money than he did before, and if his plan works out this turn, he should be able to clear away the trouble here and uh, get all of his colonies back online. Betty Crocker got to go first. He split up his forces that were here um, to kind of just be really annoying. Uh, it's mainly what he did there. Other than that, he moved some fo some new forces in that were created here and brought a home fleet towards his besieged colony or its bombarded colony, blockaded colony, uh, that may or may not make it. We'll have to see. Uh, he also brought forth a battle fleet here. He's really spread thin. He's got a lot of stuff going on but that kind of works for him in some ways with some of his abilities, but in other ways it doesn't, because he kind of, in order to outright win a battle, he kind of has to go by sheer numbers because all of his forces are naturally weaker um, because they're decreased by one whole size. It's easier to kill them. Just one reason the scout was just able to destroy a raider. Um, yeah, that was kind of surprising, but it, it did it. Uh, and I guess it was, you know, just a... It was, it was possible. Junior made some interesting, ch an interesting choice uh, on, well, two interesting choices, I think, on his round of turns. First, um, he moved one of the destroyers from here over here, doing a kind of a, it's a singular destroyer, but it still threatens the, the colonies of um, Betty Crocker, and Betty Crocker really only has his home fleet up here. Uh, Junior can probably safely guess that none of these things are going to be able to move and get that destroyer. So as long as he has it there, that's going to be an irritant. The other thing he did was he split up his Logos fleet, um, sent a carrier and three fighters here and a carrier and three fighters here along the warp point. Um, so he's kind of an equal opportunity of offender. He's bothering Sonny at the same time as he destroyed the colony here on Tempe. So. Betty Crocker pretty much has that one lost, uh, so Betty Crocker's going to have to respond to that. Kind of thought he would lose it. Um, it'll be harder for uh, Junior to penetrate over here. You maybe have to feel for Sonny, beset from all sides, uh, first by Betty Crocker and now by Junior as well, though he's not quite sure that um, Junior is gunning for him. He is sure that Junior is gunning for him. He never really felt like Junior liked him terribly much. Um, and this this choice bore out. Because I, I don't know which would be the straight-up smartest strategic choice. I don't think there can ever be straight-up smart or not smart strategy when humans are involved because there's a, a certain personality element that always factors in that you, you can't really just rationalize what people are going to do uh, by a pure best move sort of perspective. But it could be argued that it would have been pretty smart for Junior just to keep pressure on Betty Crocker here to have more pressure here so Betty Crocker had to keep acting on a multiple fronts and thereby um, not become as strong as, as quickly at you know, as he as he likely might now. But 
he, I think Junior's having his cake and eating it too. He's keeping the pressure on and also um, trying to help ensure Sonny's downfall, or at least that's what it appears to be. Um, I'm not quite sure of his motives yet. So Sonny's kind of got to decide how to respond to this. His plan was originally to bring the bringers of sorrow over here and then come back and clean up the mess over here. But then Betty Crocker did that split move. That threw him off. He's not quite sure what to do. He doesn't necessarily want to split up his bringers of sorrow, but that might be what he needs to do to, to play a bit of whack-a-mole here. But at the same time, his fleet's built to kind of deal with Betty Crocker's forces, but not really the, the fighters that he it's pretty safe to, to guess are there. Though, I guess they could be destroyers. We know they're fighters. Um, but Junior did have destroyers in that Logos fleet, I believe. So Sonny decided just to sit there and do nothing. Um, he doesn't quite know what Junior's going to do. And he doesn't can't quite deal with both of them at the same time. Uh, he could try to, to attack Junior, but he doesn't want to mess with Junior yet because Junior could be there to help him as far as he knows. He's not quite sure. So he did really nothing, leaving it to, uh, to Betty Crocker to act. And Betty Crocker was, was active. He sent a scout here, found a decoy that Sonny had put down, um, learned a few tricks from Betty Crocker there. Send a raider there, so we'll have a, com a combat here. Um, another little combat here. Lots of little skirmishes that uh, Betty Crocker's doing. Well, actually, two. Yeah, two little skirmishes better Betty Crocker's doing. It would have been three, but that was a decoy. Other than that, Betty Crocker didn't do a lot. Um, I, I won't go into detail as to what exactly he did, but you can kind of see the board state. Uh, those are the points of interest, so we'll do... A do a few combats, I think, off camera here because they're small, uh, and I know your time is precious to you. Junior had sent a destroyer here to explore and found a bunch of alien ships. He chose not to attack them and sacrificed the destroyer to the alien ships, thinking if he attacked and got lucky, he would just be um, decreasing the number of ships there uh, to help Betty Crocker, and he opted not to do that. Other than that, his Gnosis fleet won out against a car armored carrier that Betty Crocker had there um, that he sent to, to ruin a pipeline. And just kind of did some more adjustments. Doing all right for himself. Things ain't bad. Found another nebula. He's going to be able to mine that later. Um, then Sunny got a small victory. His Bringers of Sorrow went in since he's the last turn before the economic phase sequence, um, he sent his Bringers of Sorrow over to Rigel and cleared out the, the destroyer that was there. And so that was good. They got a clear victory and on top of that, a bright spot for Sonny, his Dreadnoughts became veteran Dreadnoughts. The Bringers of Sorrow Dreadnought. I guess Dreadnought. It's not Dreadnoughts. Um, so that's really great for him. Other than that, once again, he kind of stayed still. He thought about maybe sending someone to take care of the scout, but if he does that, he leaves himself open over here. Oh, God, I didn't even mention this. So Junior positioned his, uh, whatever these are, which we know they're uh, carriers with fighters attached to kind of be right outside these planets here, these two planets here, one of which is his home world, guarded only by the bringers of fear. The bringers of fear are kind of split between both of these. So if one of these gets attacked, they can decide to move over there, but then the other one's open. So that's kind of hard on them. Um, so we, we can kind of see some of his motives there in uh, focusing on that area and not messing with Betty Crocker here. So I'm messing with Betty Crocker here and here. The economic phase sequence ended with some interesting purchases, but I won't go into that. You'll see what people did purchase. One thing that was purchased was this fleet of now six, or it was six, but now it's five raiders here. I guess group. It's not a fleet. Well, I guess it could be a fleet as well. Um, and this is a very lucky group of raiders. I found out I aired and I had um, allowed Betty Crocker to have... The military academy that's one of the technologies insects can't have is military academies but these raiders still 
after defeating the aliens on this Gath planet here, they went up to Elite. So they they rolled like three ones on on their um, on their experience roll, and that was a very good roll for them. So now they pay half maintenance, rounded down. For some reason, in insect culture, the elite actually get less money for their efforts. Um, or maybe they're just really efficient at keeping up their bug pods. But um, they pay half maintenance around and out, so they pay nothing. So now he doesn't even have to pay for these raiders. He, he has to pay for very few of his ships. Um, and he got this great planet. Uh, he has a colony ship ready to colonize it on his next turn. And that means he's going to get an alien technology card. It's really, really nice for Betty Crocker. Well done, sir. Junior has a couple tough choices to make. Uh, the first one is there's a, a armored cruiser here. Betty Crocker is not, not a very tough one. Uh, there's only one in the group. That's public knowledge at this point. But it's threatening this mine here, which in this MS pipeline. Now, he can bring in one of his destroyers. He's got a group of one there to attack it. But that's probably not going to be enough. I mean, it's a it's iffy, right? Another choice is he's got a destroyer in the Logos fleet, two of them. Um, but he doesn't really want to thin out the Logos fleet too much because his home fleet's sitting right here. And he doesn't know what he's going to have to defend against. Um, he would like to have those destroyers there because they, uh, they can scan and... Um, do away with the cloaking advantage of the raiders. So he also doesn't, I think this is maybe more important to him in some respects because this is just kind of to annoy Betty Crocker. So I think he will take one destroyer here from Logos to take it here and then send this one this way and bring this one over for backup for later. Um, his other tough choice is what to do about here. He's got uh, carrier with three fighters, carrier with three fighters there, both outside of Sonny's colony. Bringers of Fear are here. He's not sure what they are composed of, but he does see this dreadnought that's coming this way. He might be running out of time uh, to capitalize on bothering Sonny here. So he could he could either hit the, the home base, which probably has a, a base, <laughs> um, and a stack of things here and some shipyards, which would be hard. Or he could attack this colony here, which would possibly make the bringers of fear. They could use a reaction movement to come attack there as well. Uh, I don't know why he would do that. I guess maybe the defenses are less here, and then he would be a little bit further away from the dreadnought. I think he's going to go for the glory, though. I think he's going to send them all in on the colony here or not the colony, the home world of Sunny, And this should be interesting. I really don't know what I'm doing in this game, so I don't... Uh, I suppose I could weigh out probabilities of success and all that, but um, we're just going to send them in and see where everything falls down. Uh, does he have any other movements? I don't think so. He could attack the home fleet. He's tempted to explore here, but I don't think he's going to do that right now. He's got the Praxis. Oh, he might... Oh, he did send a scout out. So, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, so we'll do this exploration here. There's some minerals. And he found an alternate route here uh, towards the nebula. He presses on this way. This might be kind of interesting because the battle fleet will have more ground to kind of defend against. Hmm. That'd be fun. Okay, time for our big battle for um, Sunny's home planet. Now, Junior's not going to be able to take his home planet no matter what happens. The most he could do is just turn it into dust, right? So if he wins this, he doesn't get to take the home planet. He just can start bombarding it uh, at the end of the battle. So uh, how combat's going to go, all of Junior's guys are, are considered A, and that's the order of firing. Um, but since he's the attacker and neither of them have tactics for, for some reason, um, Sonny's people are... Sonny's... Uh, Dreadnoughts and the bait, veteran dreadnoughts in the base are going to fire first. So, and then all of Junior's units will fire just this round, and then it'll be the rest of Sonny's units, and then we'll go by actually the letters that Junior's on. All right, so we'll start with the veteran dreadnoughts because I feel like they'd probably shoot first, 
and they have to shoot at fighters. They can't shoot at the, the carriers until the fighters are destroyed. Um, so they'll fire at fighters one, and the fighters have a defense of one, I believe. So they need, but they get a plus one to their attack. So it's gonna it's gonna even out. There, it's six against uh, six or better. That's one destroyed, and one not destroyed. And so I got this is something I always forget to do. I forget to roll for the experience right after a unit is destroyed. So we'll do that now. And they need to get a two or better, and they did not. All right. So that was both Dreadnoughts. Now the base is going to fire, uh, and they need a 7 or better. Kind of a... S nope. They need a 6 or better. And they failed. Now all of these fellows are going to fire. The fighters have an attack of 7, and they have to decide what they're going to attack. I was going to maybe have them screen the shipyards, but... Uh, can't really screen them all, can he? Screening is where they, they keep you from attacking. Um, I think they want to go for... It's tough. i got to think about this for a second. I'm not going to make you listen to me think, so I'm going to turn this off. Okay, they're going to go for the battle cruiser. Um, they, they thought about the dreadnoughts, but that's going to be a lot harder for them to destroy because it's it's got a defense effectively of four, so they would need to get... Um, a three or better, which isn't that great. So they're going to go for the the battle cruiser, where they need to get a two or a, a five or better. And that's a miss. That's one. Miss. That's two. A miss. That's three. Ooh, bad junior. Hit, and that's going to give it one hit. It has it has two hit points. Um, that was four. Yeah, and a miss. That's five. Now these, uh, the carriers get to attack. They have an attack of four against... So they have to get a two or better. I think they're going to attack the shipyard instead. Um, yeah. So then they have to get a three or better. Makes it a little better. Yep, that's one shipyard. And do I have a four handy? I do. Oh, and I forgot to roll experience. Remind me to do that. Miss. That's two. Oh, that's it. That's all they have is two. Okay, now let's roll experience for the fighters that were successful. And the hull is two, so that's four. Um, four or better. You double the hull to get the base number, and then there's certain reasons they would get um, bonuses or not. And they do. They make a level. They're veterans. Jink. All right. That's nice for them. And now... The uh, damaged battle cruiser gets to attack, and he'll attack the veteran group. And that is a failure. Now the shipyards get to attack, and they will also attack the veteran group. Um, they attack at three. And I think that's it, just three. Minus one, which is two. One, ooh, two, three. Four. They failed. Now the, des the destroyers are also going to attack the veteran group, and they have a four. Minus one is three or better. One, two, three, four. I, I'm really good at rolling badly, I think. Or Sunny is in. Well, no, they both are, so I think I have to blame my left hand. All right, new round. Um, Junior no longer gets to have them all be at A. It's not going to change things that much. It's just the the crew, the carriers are going to fire a little later, and these guys have to wait until the battle cruiser fires. All right, uh, but he can charge, and I think he'll do that. So that's going to let's remind us what celestial knight power does. Um, they get two attacks, and I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to, yeah, so they each get two attacks. Uh, so Dreadnought, that's going to be four Dreadnought attacks. That's going to, that's going to slice them to ribbons. Um, and that's going to be five or better. That's what they got to get if they attack the veterans. But if they attack these guys, they don't, they, they need to get six or better. So maybe they'll attack these guys. Yeah. Boom! 
man, good thing they picked that one or they wouldn't have done anything. Um, that was just two of their shots. And I think we can see where this battle's headed. Let's see if the Dreadnoughts make a level. They need two or better. They get to roll twice. Ah, no! I have another one here. Uh, nope. And nope. All right, two more Dreadnought shots against these. This time it's uh, five or better. One. Two. That's it. Okay, so that's going to take these guys, these fellows down to two. I don't want to say guys because there could be female insects. Or maybe they're asexual insects. Um, roll for a level for the Dreadnoughts. They don't get it. Base is going to fire. It's got to get a... Ooh, do they, they might have a fleet bonus now. Yeah, they definitely... They maybe did before. So since they have a... They double... They have double the people of the other people. They get to um, have another bonus. So seven or better. Two shots from the base. I don't know how the base charges, but it does. Unless, let's look at the fine print. All of their ships. However, I don't think the base is a ship. And I think thematically it wouldn't make sense for the base to charge. So it's only going to get one shot at um, seven or better. And that was a really good shot. So the base, do bases become veterans? Let's look at our ship technology sheet. Do you see base on there? I don't know that. Yeah, I don't think bases have anything like that. Okay. Now it's the battle cruiser's turn. Only one fighter left. If these carriers can survive, they'll probably retreat. Um, battle cruiser needs to get five or better, and it got a t ten, which is not five or better. This lone fighter is going to try and take out the battle cruiser before it goes into the goes to dust. Oh no, the battle cruiser gets stuck again. Five or better. Whoop. Nope. Uh, lone fighter, and this is a veteran fighter, so it's going to get a plus one to its attack, which makes it a, its attack eight minus two, which is six. Six or better odds are in its favor, but can it pull it off? It only gets one shot, one chance to take down this battle cruiser. It did it! Ow, my life! Now, let's see if it makes a level before it dies, becomes an elite. And it does, I think. No, it doesn't. Oh yes, it does. Shoo. Reason why is it gets a plus. Oh, it gets a bonus because the battle cruiser was a higher hull than the fighter. So now it's an elite fighter. So if this fighter can make it out, despite all the odds, then this fighter will not charge maintenance to Junior. And also. Enemies attack it at minus one right now. The enemies that are not the Dreadnought and the base. No, no, it's just not the Dreadnought because it's too above everyone else. So the shipyards, which have to attack it if they're going to attack, and why not, um, get minus one through their attack strength. Minus two because of its defense. Takes it down to one, but plus one because they have a lot more people. I don't know if they're figured into fleet bonuses, though. Eh, we'll just give it to them. All right. So... Two or better, four shots. Oh, yeah, they can't charge, four shots. One, two, three, four. None of them hit. Now, the four destroyers, they have a five, minus two, three or better. And they get eight shots. <laughs> One, two, oh, my life. Um. So let's see if the destroyers make a level. Oh, let's finish. That was two, so they get... Well, could matter. So we'll see if they make a level first. They do! That was two shots. They get um, six more. Three. Four. That's going to destroy a, a carrier. Five. And that's going to take it out, I believe. Okay. Oh, and we need to roll twice. Two or better. One, two, whew. Well, not much gain for Junior there, but we saw kind of how that would go down. Um, and it's a lesson, you know. This is everyone's first time playing. 
Junior knows he needs more numbers than that if he's gonna come in. Oh, someone has a sandwich for me. Okay, bye. More good luck for Betty Crocker's R5 Raider group. Um, not only did they clear out yet another alien planet here in Babbage, but they became legendary, as we kind of knew they would. I mean, they seemed like they were on the path to success, like they were destined to become legends, and so they have. There's five of them remaining. One died in their first, their first outing, and I think they'll use the memory of the loss of, their, of that one ship to drive them further towards success. Emboldened by um, the defeat of a majority of what was formerly Junior's Logos fleet uh, by Sonny, Betty Crocker has sent in a portion of his home fleet to take on what remains of the Logos fleet, which is three fighters, a destroyer, and a carrier. Now, Betty Crocker's fighters have point defense, and that's going to give them uh, an advantage, but only when they fight against the fighters. So once those are gone, if, they, if he manages to defeat them, it's going to be a much more even battle, I would say. Um, plus, they're more skilled than he is, which is going to be a problem. So let's take a look at our point defense sheet here. Point defense, point defense, point defense, point defense, point defense, point defense. A7 for these two and A6 for those two. So they're going to all fire first. Oh, but they're all at A. They're all at A because of Sonny's fearlessness, but um, Betty Crocker has a tactical advantage over everybody. So we'll go ahead and do the A7s first against those fighters. And that's going to be 7 minus 1. 6 or better. And 2 are destroyed, which is the best he could hope for. Um, we'll go ahead and roll to see if they make a level, and they're going to need 2 or better and both of them failed. So now these, they're, they're fighting A6, that's five or better. We're gonna roll in two groups of two. Nope, and I actually should do it one at a time because if one of them kills them, the other one can sh shoot at something else. Nope, and the final shot against Junior's fighters are, and that's gonna be a success. So the fighters are all gone. All of Junior's fighters, which are kind of his um, main thing right now, are, are off the map, uh, which is not to say you can't rebuild more, but right now they're gone. Um, these destroyers, they're going to fire at um, five or better against the scouts, and they'll go for the ones with the higher port point defense first. Oh, I don't know why I rolled two. I should have only rolled one. I'm going to do that again. Sorry. And that's a success. So this goes down to one. See if it makes a level. It needs a three or better. And it failed. Um, now the carrier failed. Okay, so now the scouts get a fire at this. They are kind of pathetic now. Um, three or better, two or better actually, against that destroyer. Um, same against the carrier. They could also retreat, but I don't think they want to do that. I think they want to try and hold Tempe for future turns, so here we go. And we're just gonna roll them in groups of twos because it doesn't really matter. Their stats are the same when it comes against the destroyer. Um, actually, we should roll one at a time because it's a just, well, no, the defense is the same. That's always gonna be two or better. Nope, and that's two, we got three more to go. Actually, we'll just roll the last three here. And we got rid of the destroyer, but the carrier is left. Um, now that carrier has a choice. It could just retreat out of there, and that might be what it's going to do. What's the cost on a carrier? That would matter. Ooh, I'm falling into the chair! I'm okay. Um, 12. Yeah, that's kind of valuable. I mean, he's going to have to pay a buck to keep going, but I think he's going to retreat the carrier out of there. And I think it's probably this one. You have to roll to see if they made a level. You have to roll to see if they made a level. And no, they did not. All right, so Betty Cracker has retaken Tempe, and we'll just go ahead and take the Logos fleet out of there. Why kid ourselves? It's not much of a fleet. Um, and we will bring in these mighty scouts who have worked hard. 
to retake the lost colony of Tempe. Big news! Sunny has just deployed the mighty Titan. This is the most impressive ship in the whole game. It has a hull of five. It attacks twice. It's got great attack, great defense. It attacks first. It doesn't get destroyed automatically by mines. It just takes damage. Um, it's kind of weaker to fighters. Mm, really good Titan. Let's see what it's going up against. It's a decoy. So that decoy is gone. But Sonny could get rid of that decoy without fear because he has the mighty Titan. And it's on the field. And it looks like he's about, he's working his way to taking his homeland back. The yellow presence is gone. There's less blue. Blue seems to be kind of retreating. Um, these people are still here. This raider is still here. He almost went out after the raider, but he figured this area is kind of a little, it's pretty secure to, as far as the raiders are concerned. Uh, but he didn't know what was there. So he's going to bring the Titan up. Maybe get rid of these mines next. Then head over here, and wow, the Titan, Titan Five. It's been a rough turn for Junior. First, he lost all of those things that were here. Then he lost Tempe, which was a good point of annoyance for him. Then he lost uh, a miner that was mining this nebula in the MS pipeline that was there thereby cutting off lo the, the remains of the Logos fleet or the new Logos fleet which was just kind of some dregs that were hanging around that coalesced there to continue threatening Tempe um, and now he's trying to get it back with the remains of the Logos fleet right here so he figures there's no sense in just sitting there and he doesn't want all these ships these four ships which have been revealed sitting behind him. So now he has to fight to see if he can keep Betty Crocker from his area and just kind of try and wall things off and rebuild and then press back. Um, definitely the whole situation has changed a lot since the start of this round of turns. Um, it'd be interesting to see how this all shakes out. I think we're going to get to some sort of equilibrium here and then it'll be like a, a matter of build up and attack, which is not really in Betty Crocker's favor. I think he, he needed to get the surprise attack going, but he didn't really have everything he needed to get that done. Uh, Sonny's coming back, but we'll talk more about that later. Let's get this, this fight going. This junior has an armored carrier present in the battle. He needs to reveal this. He has an electronic warfare module. Um, I, I, I read through the descriptions of all these different alien technology cards in they're pretty generic and their relationship to what they actually do is pretty tenuous in most cases. Uh, so here we have an electronic warfare module which I guess helps armored carriers get plus one to their attack strength. Eh, I think kind of a weak spot in the game. Well, I don't know, kind of a strength and a weak spot in the game both is the genericness of what it does. Um, and, you know, it's not promising anything different. It's called Space Empires 4X which is like the most generic name you can get for this kind of game, I think. Uh, it doesn't promise any sort of backstory or any sort of, s well, a story develops through the plane of the game, but there's, it's kind of a, there's a sort of symmetry to everything that um, takes away from that. Uh, anyway, still, I think that allows you to kind of maybe focus on the, the story that the game tells, but it would help to have some more context other than that. Here's these kind of generic racists. Racists. Yeah, I guess they're racists. These generic races that are trying to expand for some reason. Um, anyway, let's get to the combat. So Junior's forces will all attack first, and this carrier gets a plus two, plus one from that, plus one because Junior has researched attack technology. Um, and I think he's going to try to take out Sonny's carrier. Carrier versus carrier. And I keep saying carrier. Armored cruiser versus armored cruiser. So it's six to one. That's five or better. Bloop. And it succeeds. Let's see if it makes a level. You to get three or better. It did. I'm a veteran. Now the destroyer 
is going to attack the destroyer, destroyer versus destroyer. And this destroyer is actually a veteran already, so it's going to get a plus one to its attack. Even if it were just skilled, I guess it would get a plus one to its attack. So that's going to be um, five, six, to zero, six or better. And that failed. The next destroyer needs to get a five or better. And it failed. So now all of uh, Betty Crocker's forces get to attack. First destroyer is going to be probably attacking this. Nah, it's going to attack this one. It wants to get something out of it. Reason why is this one would give it an additional minus one. So it's going to be um, four, three, because Junior has defense. And that 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 worked. He that sure worked. All right. So let's see if it makes a level two or better. It did not. Now both scouts they are going to attack at. They have to get a one, no matter what they attack. So they're going to attack the carrier. And now they're going to attack the destroyer because if they just damage the carrier, that's not going to take it out. So they'll roll twice. All right. I think we see Junior's going to win this one. Um, carrier gets to attack. It's going to attack the destroyer, and it's got a six to one. No, yeah, six or better. And it got a six, so this destroyer is gone. And then um, this destroyer attacks at a six as well. Oh, that should have been seven. Sorry, six as well. And it got it. Choo -choo. So now the scout has to decide whether it's going to try to roll a one or retreat. Um, I think retreating makes more sense, and it will retreat to this warp point here. And I guess, did I forget to see if either of them gained a, gained a level. Okay, three are better for both of them. Carrier or armored cruiser first. It is an elite armored cruiser, which is nice because it's about time to pay maintenance, and the destroyer does not. All right, thank you. And that's going to do it for this edition of the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Like I said before, I think things are uh, maintaining or we're moving towards some sort of equilibrium similar to the game start, except people have changed. No longer are they generic. They've kind of developed a personality through their choices, technology choices, and build choices. And what they've discovered, the experiences they've had in the universe as the games progressed. But they're kind of going back to the point where neither of them has so much of an advantage. Betty Crocker really needed to, um, I think as the insects, just kind of build a lot and go forward and conquer uh, because they can do that. They can build a lot without having to pay that maintenance, which gives them more money in the long run. He still gained a lot though. He's got a lot of colonies to his name and he's still gaining more, which the other ones don't have. Sonny still has kind of a disadvantage with all those warp points in his neighborhood and there's still some blue sitting there giving him trouble. So he hasn't fully recovered. So it's not fully at the equilibrium I was talking about. Junior, who knows what's going on with him. He's got close to a third of the board under his control, but again, not as many colonies there as what Betty Crocker has, uh, who maybe has a fourth of the board. How does that work out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, anyway, so it's going to be interesting going forward. I really don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I, I say that a lot, but that's because I don't. I sometimes kind of have an idea. Like for a while I was thinking maybe Betty Crocker was going to take it, but I never was even too sure. I knew Sonny was researching all the, the, that uh, higher ship technology. I didn't know it would be as uh, beneficial as it ended up being, partially because of his defensive nature. He didn't really deploy a lot of what he had just kind of kept them sitting there. So in a way, I think Betty Crocker's various ruses did pay off because they kept Sonny from really doing much of anything other than just kind of subsisting. But at the same time, he didn't press fast enough. Uh, he didn't attack fast enough and do enough damage because a lot of it was a ruse in the first place. So he wasn't really able to with what he had. Um, but since he didn't do that, Sonny was kind of still able to get enough research done that he was able to grow. And at the same time, Junior came into his own and is maybe going to be able to do something more in the future. Uh, one one part of the board that 
hadn't seen a lot of attention, at least in terms of video time, but has been very much my thoughts, is the very rightermost point, if we're looking from this viewpoint here. Um, there's, a, there's a colony of Betty Crackers and a colony of Juniors that are very close to each other, and they both are able, able to build things there. That's probably going to be another point of conflict coming up here soon. So look forward to that next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, Beralti Leg 5, Space Empires 4, X. That's all I have to say. <laughs>